The Troyton Lego Tro Railway is now on Patreon. There are two tiers to choose from. The first tier is a smaller, more general support amount, and the second is the Locomotive Builder, which is for more hardcore LEGO train fans. These tiers unlock things including having your name featured in each video. You will have access to updates in regards to the Triton LEGO Railway, both anything personal that may affect the railway and the railway as a whole. You will be able to have participation in polls for current and future projects. You will be able to decide what comes next. You will have early access and sneak peeks to anything related to work in progress for rolling stock, structures, locomotives, and anything else being built on the Triton LEGO Railway. And finally, you will have access to LEGO Digital Designer files of my locomotives. I have had many requests for instructions for various models by many people, and the best way for me to deliver this is through LEGO Digital Designer. To do this in real life and brick build them as a live LEGO build video is going to be quite complicated, and through the use of LEGO Digital Designer, you can see the bricks themselves, maybe make some modifications to make it your own kind of model. And it is something that I am very familiar with, so we are going with that. If you like what you see and want to help me expand my LEGO Railway, then consider being a member on Patreon today. Anything you give through Patreon will all go towards the Triton LEGO Railway. It's all towards building LEGO trains and all towards building the best LEGO Railway possible. Link to the Patreon page is in the description below. Hello and welcome to another LEGO Train Mock Showcase video. This is an LNER P2 in a special white livery. So this livery is something that was first seen on the Silver Jubilee, and I think is actually unique to the Silver Jubilee. It is the express that was made, I believe, in the 1930s, where it saw the first four A4 class locomotives to be built. Now, this livery, I for one think, looks absolutely spectacular and a bit unique. I don't know how many engines or um, class of locomotives, I should say, out there sport such a livery with a nice clean white look to it, some grey and some silver in areas. I think this looks absolutely spectacular. Now, I did give the A4 a go. I will put some pictures on the screen now of the, not the finished version of the boiler, but it was the boiler that I thought looked best with all the techniques I've learned from the time of building seven wide models. But I just didn't like it. The fact that I couldn't get all the piston rod details in, the fact that I had to potentially go out to eight wide, it was something I wasn't just too keen on. So, yeah, I think it's fair for me to say that a P2 was better for me because, first of all, I could build a P2 better than I can... That, uh, I can build a P2 better than I can build an A4. Secondly, the P2 is a favourite locomotive of mine. Thirdly, with all the techniques I've learned over the years, well, yeah, I suppose over the years, but especially since over the months of building at 7 wide, all these techniques coming together to make one ultimate engine, if you will, you know, for a lack of a better word, I could just turn this into the best model possible of my favourite locomotive in such an amazing livery as well. I think I've done this engine really good. So yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm going to record a bunch of videos regarding this locomotive. Obviously the lining video is going to be done after this. I'm also going to do another video of this next to my green P2, just to compare some of the sections, compare the liveries and compare some of the details in certain areas. One of the most notable areas for me will be the wheels on the tender. Something I first did for the 9F and I think it's actually a really cool design. Something that's more refined, that's more realistic, and something that's thinner as well, it's not sticking out really wide. And yeah, that's something I need to implement in the future. Sadly, I'm not going to be um, going back through other locomotives to upgrade the wheel designs, because it's going to take a lot of Britling quarters, and it will be very expensive. So this is the boiler of the new P2. This is almost the same as the other P2 boiler, but there are some differences. First of all, if we go to the cylinder section here, we still got a little bit that sticks out to be eight wide. Not too much of a problem because I know it works, but there isn't any other pieces up here. There was a one by two sort of L-shaped piece that kind of came up to the top of the running plates here. And a cheese slope was stuck to the side of the boiler kind of to um, meet where this stuck out of, kind of to represent how it looks on the actual P2. But because I couldn't find the appropriate bricks in the dark gray color, 
I thought, yeah, I could just skip it for now. I mean, it's not going to really kill me or anything. This is technically a fictional locomotive. The P2 didn't sport this Silver Jubilee livery. So, in a way, I can get away with making a few modifications because technically it's fictional. Anyways, we have the front of the boiler, of course. It shares the same streamlined design as the A4s, and I thought it was more appropriate to go with this design instead of the standard P2. So it still resembles the A4 locomotive that was in this livery. Golden buffers, of course, because I love this locomotive, and of course a golden whistle. And those are the only three golden bricks on this model. Everything else is dark grey, black, white, and silver. Well, not silver bricks, but silver lining. You know what I mean, though. One thing I want to quickly point out, I think uh, this is somewhat genius. We've got these handle pieces going along the side of the boiler. It's not flex tube, it's some um, white handlebar pieces. Nothing really out of the ordinary. However, up here, we have a hockey stick. Now, of course, the hockey stick curves at one end, and it looks like it's pointed down in the correct position as you would see it on the actual locomotive. So if you're doing anything like this for the side of a boiler and you want to have something curved down and you don't want to really modify any bricks, buy a hockey stick. A minifigure one that is not a real one. Uh, banter. But you know what I mean. I think that shape looks really cool. And it was uh, not a eureka moment, but it was like, oh my god, that could work. You know, yeah. Speaking of the cylinder design, just to go back to here, there is a slight modification in how this brick um, or this assembly is put together. So this brick in particular is what I'm trying to point out, not the kind of, well, then again, there, there are two bricks um, that are new here. So we got one of these, but it's half on that side, and there is a 1x2 sort of technic brick that's poking out with a cross axle beam going across it, and it's all fixed in place with this tiny light grey piece here. It's a bit difficult to explain because I don't know the exact name of those bricks. But for what it is, it's a lot cleaner looking than what I've done previously. I've bought loads of those to, um, but eh, I'm not going to say update future models because I don't know how many trains are going to be building after this one. Then again, I'm not really going to go back and change other models either. But I think this is actually really nice. It's a very simple idea, but one that I think I probably should have discovered a long time ago. So to go along the side of the boiler, it is very similar to the original P2. I think this looks really nice in this livery. And another thing I've done to resemble the A4s is the shape of the boiler down here. It's more boxy. It doesn't curve into like a normal boiler shape. And again, that's just to resemble the A4 design. Going to the back of the boiler now, we have a slight modification to how this whole section here works. So we've got the same idea of using bricks built sideways. We've got those weird angled bricks um, uh, between the cab and this section here. A slight tidy up with how these pieces are arranged here to represent the window. I think there's a tiny gap in there, but then again, I don't think that's something to worry about. I think that's just my brain playing tricks. Um, yeah, I think that's all right. Let's just move on. But one thing I've done slightly differently is how this section in particular is kind of connected, I suppose. So this bit here, now that is supposed to connect to there, like a curved shape, but to get the right bricks in there and have it all kind of mingle in, for me was a bit too difficult because I did actually give that a go, but nothing was solid enough. It was bricks balancing in certain places and I thought, you know what, I'm not going to do that. It's just a bit too much for me to kind of get right. And with how things were going, building this, I thought, I'm so close to throwing this against the wall. Just leave it as it is. For me, it does work. It's fine. Let's not break anything else. But all in all, I think that slightly more square look there, I think looks really nice. Instead of it being one constant slope upwards, it closes the gap as much as it can. And despite seeing that gap there, personally, that doesn't bug me. So when I built my 9F, I discovered a new technique to cover the wheels in a more realistic way. Is using this, I believe it's called a droid arm. And it's connected to a few beams on the inside of this assembly here with some more clip arm pieces. I don't really, um, don't really know the names of these bricks. But you can see the shape of them, you can recognise them, and it's all done really well. On this size brick, this is a standard train wheel made by LEGO. 
it's a bit difficult to kind of get right because of the uh, the size of the wheel but it all still works it's all still there and i think this is one of the best looking designs for this kind of spring i believe it's a spring but you know with what you see on the outside of a wheel i think that looks really really cool uh this is something i was hoping to avoid i'm gonna have to take the engine off the tracks so we do have a minifigure sporting some amazing hair mind you i was doing my brickman quarters i saw this hair and i thought you know what i could pull that off and in a way i have you know just give me a few months and let me grow my hair out i could probably do that again going to the inside of the cab i stole this interior from mallard when i was building this as an a4 i pulled that out of mallard and thought you know what let me just have that as a backup and in a way, I'm not going to return this to Mallard because, first of all, I care about this engine more than Mallard. Secondly, Mallard is a lesser designed engine in the sense where, going back to what I said about the A4s being difficult to build, my Mallard model really isn't anything to be too happy about if I was ever going to go to a Lego show and bring some of my models. Mallard will be staying here. This, however, will be taking up a prime spot. So, yeah, there we go. That is my new P2 boiler. And now we're going to move on to the tenders. I'm going to try and focus on one at a time, but I'm not going to cut between the two tenders because once I go through most of the details on the first tender, it'll basically be covered on the second tender. But there are differences, so I'm not going to waste too much time with the second tender. So this is just another standard LNU, LNU or LNER design. And now it's time to focus on the tenders. Now this is a fictional locomotive, so having two tenders is probably something I can get away with more with this model than my other P2. At the same time, the Flying Scotsman, which is an LNER A3, and Bittern, which is an LNER A4, at some time sported two tenders. And since it's a thing that exists, I want two tenders on my models, just like my original P2. I'm going to focus on one at a time. Most of the details covered in the first tender will be covered in the second tender, so there's going to be too much to repeat. But there's no point in really cutting between takes to uh, cover each tender. So, yeah, this is a very different looking tender, most notably about the wheels, because ultimately with how that design has been changed, it has... well, not has, it does look drastically different in comparison to all the other LNER tenders that I've built. Can I actually grab one without dropping the camera? Okay, let's do this. I can actually reach up. There we go. Yes, there we are. So if I just put them next to each other like this. There we go. So that is the green LNER tender for my green P2. You can tell, first of all, that the wheels on the white tender are closer together. And that's something I really like. Uh, mainly for the reason is with how this new spring design has been made. These wheels are on a one by one Technic brick with the hole in the middle because it all needs to be lined up in the center. Therefore, it's spanning three bricks um, or three studs wide. Or if I go to this one, these wheels are sat in a two by one Technic brick and therefore are taking up four studs. So this can be more accurate in terms of its length because the wheels aren't spaced out so much. In fact, if I put them together uh, side by side like this... There you go. Great camera work. Yeah, it's actually quite a bit shorter. It's nothing too different about the perspectives just because, you know, one tender is in front of the other. It's not supposed to kind of be visually manipulating in any way. But the white tender is about one or two studs shorter. That's actually a good thing because I've always thought my other tender designs, because the wheels were based up around this, were a bit too long, despite only being one or two studs. I think it's a bit incorrect with the proportions. But I think with this tender, it's actually done really well. Alright. I'm actually quite pleased with that. That's the first time I've put the tenders together. Um, next to each other, rather. There will be a full video coming out after this one of this P2 next to my green P2. So you can see the differences in much more detail. So going back to this one, well, speaking of differences and similarities, if I actually take this off the track again, 
turn it this way so we can face the light big brain moment so you can see that the interior details are basically the same we have a one by four arch piece with some one by one round tiles to represent the coal we have a shovel we have a one by two tile to represent a locker for the cab crew and this is a corridor tender so the corridor is down there and it's only one stud wide minifigures will not fit through all in all for what this tender is it's well, something you've seen before really just new wheels and new length because again we saw that it's actually two studs shorter than all my others this looks so much nicer though again it's all done in that wheel design i think that really stands out and it really looks so good one thing yeah, yeah let's cover it with this tender why not so because this is a corridor tender there is a one by one Technic brick here with a one by one circular tile that is transparent. And that's supposed to represent a window in the corridor. Now, obviously, you're not going to actually see through that. If I try and get some angle, yeah, you can kind of see. There we go. So you can see down the corridor here a little bit. But because this window is basically built into the wall, it's impossible to see through. Even if I took that tile piece off. You're just going to see white because it's all in line with the wall of the tender. So because I got something on that side, I thought to fill in the space on this side, I'm just using a small clip piece here to hold a black bar. Just again to break up the uh, details here. And because I've got these connecting pieces to be five studs wide, I can't really add too much here without it sticking out like a sore thumb. So yeah, that's probably something to revise in the future. But the fact that it's a big enough gap for minifigures to get through... I for one think is quite nice. It's a bit of a tight squeeze though, but it does work. And now we go to the second tender. So this is basically the same as the second tender on my original P2 in terms of the details on the top. We've got the two bars and the two by two circle tile. This is the water tender where this is the coal tender. To anybody who doesn't know why I'm using two. For the Flying Scotsman, just to use it for example, the journeys it would make would be really long ones without stopping, so it needed to carry more coal and more water. It couldn't fit that in one tender, so it was extended to two. Big brain moment. So we have the details here continuing in terms of that bar and the window on one side, so it's all lined up. And of course, going to the other end, we have another window and another bar piece. The same silver lined rectangle on the side of the tender. Both sides, of course, the same wheel design, same base as well. This was um, a bit stupid of me to not build them both up at the same time. I was building this one first to make sure it was all okay. But instead of me going, okay, now that the base is done on this one, let's do this one so I can build it up to be you know, as accurate as possible to each other. But no, I just smashed on with this one because I was really excited. But then again, this wasn't too difficult to build afterwards. And yeah, that is basically it for the second tender. There's nothing new for me to say because everything was covered in the first tender. But all in all, seeing the two together like that, it's just the livery though, that makes it look so good. Even if it was done in apple green, which is LNER's kind of main livery, I still think it would look really nice. I think mainly for me, it's that window detail that I've added in for the corridor. I think that's one of the main things that really makes it stand out, just so I know that it's a corridor tender. And there it is, my silver P2. Ah, uh, the more I look at this model, the more I love it. It's so gorgeous, it's such a unique livery. I think this stands out so much. I do have another white Lego train on my railway, but that one is nowhere near as detailed as this. In case anybody is wondering, it's the TLR class 242 tender engine. If you know what it is, that's top marks for you. If you don't know what it is, then don't worry, you're not missing out on anything. This is the engine to focus on. This is the engine to represent the Triton Lego Railway. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all ever so much for watching. Remember to stick around for the upcoming videos of this in action, a better look at the lining on this model, and a comparison video of this P2 next to my green P2. So thanks for watching, be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. I will see you all in the next episode. Bye.